Welcome to Fresh Start. It's a 10-week small group curriculum that aims to answer some questions about Christianity and faith and then equip you with the tools to grow in your walk with God. One of the reasons we're doing this life group study is to give a clear picture of who God is. And He's a good God. You see, God is love. And today, we're going to unpack that. You see, our view of God determines how we approach Him. There are a lot of different distorted views about God. My personal view was distorted and wasn't even biblical. Uh, too many of us are, uh, have a view of God that's just based on what I like to call just bad info. Well, today, I want to dispel three wrong views about who God is and that just simply aren't true. And then I want you to have the right view of who God is based on His Word. You see, God is three persons in one. He is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And most of all, I want to give you three reminders that God wants you to know as you approach Him. So, what's your view of God? I want you to discuss that in your life group after this video. Here's what the Bible says. In 2 Corinthians 6.18, it says, I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. You see, God is a father, and we are his sons and daughters. Most don't see him that way. Bad relationships in the past, particularly with our fathers, get in the way of that view. You know, father wounds run so deep. But it's not just fathers that distort that view, it's other men in our lives as well, such as uncles, grandfathers, teachers, coaches. You see, the devil wants to come in and he wants to pollute and distort those relationships so that we will have a distorted view of who God is. In America, there's three predominant views that are completely wrong about God. The first is that God is an authoritarian. They see God as a harsh God. And that's the primary view in the South. You see, that was my view when I was younger. I thought that if I didn't do everything that was right, God wouldn't, didn't want anything to do with me. And so it caused me to run away from God. And that's a tough way to live. And that's not what the Bible says. The second is that he's a distant God. You see, God is indifferent or passive, like he just created the earth and walked away from it all. You see, that's a predominant view in the West. You wonder... If God even exists, you reach out to him, but he never answers your prayers or uh, you've pursued him, but come up empty. It produces a fairy tale God. And, and I want you to know that God is an authoritarian and he isn't distant from you. And the, the third view I want to discuss is that he's a critical God. People see God as harsh and hard to please. This is a predominant view in the East. Uh, it just... The whole process of knowing God feels so religious and hard to deal with. It's works-based, and it, it doesn't feel like you can live up to God's expectations for your life. Hey, everybody. Good news. God is none of those things, authoritarian, distant, or critical. See, God's true self can be seen in what the theologians call the Trinity, this just means that there is one God that exists in three persons at the same time, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Rather than try to explain the mystery of the Trinity, I want to show you the Trinity, that God reveals who He is in the Bible. In Matthew 3, the Bible uses this story uh, to show us the relationship between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit this is how God treated his own son, Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we know Jesus and the Father talked every day through the unity of the Holy Spirit, but we really only have uh, two records of that happening. And I think it's unique that both accounts say the same thing. That's something to be noted. In Matthew 3, 16 through 17, it says, As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Here we see the one God as revealed in three persons. 
the Father speaking as a voice from heaven, the Son who's coming out of the water being baptized, and the Holy Spirit descending like a dove on the Son with the love of the Father. Isn't that beautiful? This is a clear picture of God. God is a Father who loves us, and God is the Son who came on a rescue mission to save us, and the Holy Spirit works within us. Now, if God spoke these words to Jesus, him, His Son, then as children of God, these words are for us too. This is important and essential that each of you develop a proper, healthy understanding of the nature of God and who He really is. It will shape the way we see God. It's all biblical, but it goes against society and religion and, and all the misconceptions. Now, as we approach God, there are three things that I want you to always remember. Number one, he says, you are my child. Now, when God says, you are my child, that equivocates acceptance. See, he gave Jesus his acceptance when he said, this is my son. You see, God doesn't just want to be our God. He wants to be a father to us. He wants relationship. We're family. In Romans 8, 15 through 16, the Bible tells us that the spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you can live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Abba is just an Aramaic word for Papa or Daddy the most endearing term that we could use to describe our Father. You can tell the type of relationship you have with someone by what they call you and what you call them. Some people know me as Pastor Nick, and that's really cool. That's, I, I like being called Pastor, but others just call me Nick, and quite candidly, I prefer just being called Nick. Recently, I received a phone call from someone uh, who was asking to speak to a Mr. Nick Caveness. Now, I'm going to be honest, I probably won't be hanging out with that guy this weekend. But you can tell a lot by how people address you. Now, I have four kids, and my kids, they all call me dad. Emma, especially, my baby girl, she calls me daddy, and that just melts my heart. See, God sees us as family. In Romans 8.16 in the message, it says that God's Spirit touches our spirit and confirms who we really are. We know who He is, and we know who we are, father and children. This is important for you to know. So many struggle with issues of rejection, and if you feel rejected, you'll see God that way too. When we receive God's acceptance, we're freed from the burden of needing everyone else's acceptance. And God accepts us. Now that doesn't mean that He, he approves of everything we do. He knows what we do, and yet He continues to accept us. Well, why would God do that? Simple, it's because we're His kids. My four kids, they screw up royally, but I find that in those moments, that's when I love them the most. In Hebrews 13.5, in the message paraphrase, it says, God assures us, I'll never let you down, never walk off and leave you. God accepts you because you are his child. I know that I, I had grasped this truth when I began to run towards God when I had sinned instead of running away from him. And that's how you know you've got it too. It's whenever you've messed up, you just run to your dad and you raise those arms and you say, Dad, I'm so sorry. And he's there to love you and accept you even in those moments. Now, the second thing I want you to remember when you approach God is that God says, I love you. I love you equals affection. Now, this seems really simple, but you got to understand that he gave Jesus affection and expressed his love when he says, this is my child whom I love. You see, that, that's, that sounds crazy. It sounds cliche to say that God loves you, but it's actually really huge. 
Uh, today, in our society, we say we love all kinds of things, and we kind of abuse that term, but God genuinely loves us, and God deeply cares for you. When he sees you, he smiles because he loves you. If God had a refrigerator, your picture would be right up there on it. In 1 John 3, 1, it tells us, See how very much our Father loves us, for he calls us his children, and that is what we are. How can you say that? Some might say, I'm not that lovable. And there's been plenty of times in my life that I certainly wasn't lovable. But that's because maybe we don't understand God's love. You see, God's love is unconditional. That means it's without condition. Your actions can't change God's love for you. In Romans 8.38, it says, I am convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love. See, God demonstrates His love for us that while we were still sinning, He loved us. Now, that's true love. It's not because of what I do, but what God, the Son, Jesus, has already done for me. You see, in Romans 5, 9, it confirms this by saying, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this way. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God loves us because of who we are. Here's the last one. God wants you to know. God says, I'm proud of you. When you approach God, you can know that. When he says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased, he was given Jesus affirmation. And he wants you to have the same affirmation as well. He wants you to know you're doing a great job. You're doing a great job because you're taking your next steps and taking this fresh step life group. You see, there's, this one can be confusing sometimes, though, whenever we say that God is saying that you're, he's proud of you and that you're doing a good job because you felt like you haven't done anything to be proud of. But God sees your potential. He knows how he made you. And he put gifts in you and abilities in you that he wants to empower through the Holy Spirit. And that's why he's proud of you. He sees what you can become as you discover your spiritual gifts. You develop them and then rely on the Holy Spirit. In 1 John 3, 2, it says, Dear friends, now we are children of God and what we will be has not yet been made known. Nothing makes the devil more nervous than my God-given potential. Not who you are, but what you can be. See, God is proud of you, not just because of who you are, but who you can be through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians 2.10, it says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God is proud of us because He sees our potential. So let's tie all this together and sum it up. In 2 Corinthians 13.14, it says, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That's a beautiful picture of the Trinity encouraging you. God is not an authoritarian. He's not distant or critical. He's a Father who loves us. And His Son Jesus came on a rescue mission to save us. And the Holy Spirit is what dwells inside of us. Now when we approach God, we can do it through relationship, not rules. Relationship changes everything. And I'm so excited for each of you as you go on this journey of pursuing God. And I want you to have a vibrant discussion about God in your life group. But first, let me just pray. Father, I thank you for each person under the sound of my voice. Father, I pray that you would encourage them with the understanding that you are their Father. You do love them. You are proud of them. And that, Father, you see their future potential and what they're going to be through the power of your Holy Spirit. God bless each and every person. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys.